Hi, I'm Tom Long, and this is the second Sunday of Lent, uh, year B, 2021. Our gospel passage is Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. And as I was uh, reading that, I was reminded of an old uh, hymn, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of pick it out here a little bit uh, and see if you can... Uh, I think you probably know this one. <laughs> well, maybe not. Let's let me try that again. Give me another chance. mind and the, and the background of your thinking as we talk and, and explore a little bit uh, Mark chapter 8 verses 31 through 38 and I'll put a link to that verse or to that passage in the description of our video for today. I'm not going to um, read that to you but when my sister was teaching grade school she uh, would sometimes read children's stories and sometimes she would just tell them a story and they liked it better when she um, just told them the story instead of reading from a book. And so they would ask her, uh, tell it from your face. Tell it from your face. And they meant not to, not to be reading it. Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit and uh, read what I have to say. But in terms of the gospel account, um, I, I just want to give a little bit of background, and then if you want to read verbatim what that passage says, uh, please use the link in the description below. But um, leading up to this point in the Gospel of Mark, and we've kind of bounced around through the um, lectionary so far this year at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, and uh, there's all these wonderful and inspiring stories about uh, people being healed, people being delivered from demon possession, um, the Pharisees and uh, the, who had uh, Sadducees and, and the scribes, these people that had authority over the Jewish population, um, being embarrassed by the way that they had corrupted their use of power. And that coupled with the common understanding of the Messianic prophecies of the Old Testament brought us up to the point where the Apostle Peter uh, um, confesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And at this point, I can kind of imagine the high that all of the disciples are on. It's like, we're going marching into Jerusalem. We're going to become victorious. Um, Jesus is going to reign over the whole earth. And we're going to be, you know, in, in, in the Lord's cabinet, so to speak, of this new ruling kingdom. So they were all psyched up. And then we come to our passage today where Jesus says, well, the, the passage says, He began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo a lot of suffering. In fact, he's going to die. And not just any kind of death, but he's going to die on a cross. Well, this is the first time this concept <laughs> comes up in the Gospel of Mark because the cross in their culture was a symbol of the um, just deserts of the criminal element in the culture. And so when, uh, when Jesus says he's going to die, he's going to die on the cross, and he's going to be rejected by all of the leaders, and then three days rise again. Man, once that word cross came out, they were like, whoa, this is not what we signed up for. And in fact, the guy that had just said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, that guy takes Jesus off to the side and rebukes him. And I, the word there means that he speaks harshly to him 
and says, look, you're going the wrong way, Jesus. Don't let that ever happen. Yeah, and, and it, it, so he, he's sort of like the, uh, the, the political advisor saying, hey, we don't want to go down that road. It's bad publicity. Uh, stop talking like that. And Jesus doesn't respond directly to Peter. In fact, he turns to the other disciples, and in doing so, he probably is turning his back on Peter. And he says, get behind me, Satan. So we go from, you're the rock, and this confession that you've just made is the rock that we're going to build the church on to get behind me, Satan. And he's not just saying that to Peter, he's saying that to all of the disciples. He wants them to understand that the, the easy path that they had hoped for was not the path that Jesus was going to lay out for them to follow. And then in the, in the end, he's telling them to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. We'll talk a little bit more uh, about that. But kind of put yourself in their shoes. You know, they've had all these exciting encounters where the kingdom is breaking through. The, the light of God's kingdom is breaking through and breaking the powers of uh, darkness. And they're all kind of nodding their heads enthusiastically. And saying, yeah, 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 sign me up for that. I, I had a friend uh, going all the way back. It was either late high school or early college. But uh, he came to the place in his life where he professed Christ in, in the church. And uh, I was really excited about it. It was one of, the, one of my first friends uh, to convert to Christianity. And, uh, and then all of a sudden... He stopped coming to church, and I, I didn't see him. And I was walking down the main street of our little town where I grew up, and as I walked past the front of the theater, he was coming out, and I said, hey, I, you know, I've missed seeing you in church. What's up? Everything okay? And he said, no, everything's not okay. Uh, after I became a Christian, my girlfriend left me. Uh, all these bad things started happening in my life. I started feeling bad. Um, and I decided that this Jesus thing wasn't for me. And so, you know, he had this idea that you see a lot promoted in evangelism, even to this day, that if you come to Christ, well, everything's going to be, you know, uh, sweetness and light, as they say. Uh, you're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And, uh, you know, just come to, come to Jesus and... Um, Everything in your life is going to go swimmingly, and you're just going to be happy all of the time. And so that's kind of also where the disciples were at the point where this passage occurs. And now Jesus, the, the, the gospel story, begins to swing in a new direction as he says, Look, no, we're not, we're not taking the easy path now. We're taking the path of the cross. And uh, they're taken aback by that, and, it, and it's understandable. And Jesus says uh, that they, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? And so, um, as I'm reading this, I thought of a couple of quotes from different books that I've read over the years. One of them was from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who wrote The Cost of Discipleship. And he was a Lutheran pastor at a time uh, in, as Hitler was rising to power in Germany. And the Lutheran Church was supporting fascism in Germany. And, and all of the hatred and the bigotry that went with that. And Bonhoeffer stood up and said, this is not Christ-like. This is not what Jesus would have us do. And he spoke truth to power. And as a consequence of that, he ended up in a concentration camp. And just before that concentration camp was to be liberated at the end of the war, the Nazis killed him. He's the one that wrote, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Another quote that came to my mind was from uh, a missionary, Jim Elliot, who uh, went to try to reach an unreached 
people known to be very dangerous in the country of Ecuador, and um, they speared him on the riverbank and killed him. And in his diary, he had written the words, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. So that very much uh, reflects, mirrors the words that we see in the, in the gospel here. For what shall it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? So as we prepare ourselves in this Lenten season for Good Friday, traditionally people think about what will I give up for Lent and they give up things like alcohol or, or chocolate or you know, what, whatever, some, some pleasure of theirs. That's not what this is talking about. I mean, I'm all for tradition, don't get me wrong. But that's not what this passage is talking about. This pas passage is saying to humble yourself before the Lord and put His call ahead of your desires, ahead of your ambitions. The world says, show some swagger. The Lord says, show some humility. The world says, look out for yourself. Jesus says, look out for your sisters and brothers. So if you think about Lent and you think about carrying your cross, uh, I like to think about it this way. Um, I, I work with this uh, little church in uh, Brunswick County, North Carolina. And um, it's just the sweetest, most loving fellowship. And uh, it's every time you talk to somebody, uh, you hear another story about the true meaning of this passage. Because people say, well, um, I'm sorry I didn't return your call. I was on my way over to uh, Bill's. He hasn't been feeling well, and I went over to walk his dog. Or somebody hasn't, hasn't been doing well, so I went and did their shopping for them and made them a little dinner, and I, was, and I dropped that off. And it's just story after story like that. And the thought that came to my mind was, when you're going over to, we have hurricanes and tornadoes down here, and uh, in fact, we just had one come through here recently. And as I hear the stories about all the people pitching in to help, uh, in my mind, in my, the way I visualize that is, those are people who put a cross on their shoulders and walked to their neighbor's house and met their neighbor's needs. When Jesus calls a man, he bids him come and die. When Jesus calls a woman, he bids her come and die. When Jesus calls a family, he bids us to die to ourselves, be alive to God, and care about one another. And in that way, even though it seems like we've sacrificed everything, we realize that we have, in fact, gained everything. So until that day uh, that Jesus talks about at the end of this passage, when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, until that day, take up your cross and find somebody that needs your help. And may God bless you on your pilgrim journey. Thank you for spending your time with me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.